that great Houston activist, uh, Daniel Cohen, uh, sent me some info about the Houston mayoral race. And this applies to everybody. So those of you that I see a whole bunch of you in the chat already, not only from Houston, but from other places, this is the kind of stuff activists are supposed to do, how they get engaged. So El Senor Daniel Cohen, how are you doing today, my brother? I'm good, my brother. How are you, my friend? I am doing fine. I'm doing fine. You know, as 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 we speak, I am ripping that audio that came out of the Who's show again that you told me about. It's Michael Berry, which if anybody listens to Michael Berry in most cities, if you had a Michael Berry, they would, you know, push him off the air. And here in Houston, it's really a big problem with right wing radio where we need to call out what these people are talking about because they are consistently misogynistic, racist, xenophobic, anti-gay and outside of the mainstream of not just Houston, but the United States. Uh, And that's exactly what this clip shows today as well. It's a mayor's race, which we're going to we're going to talk a little bit about today. But and I have it ready up? for you. I have okay, the little clip ready. I want you guys to hear it. And I, and guys, remember, this is impromptu. So if it doesn't work out right, you know, we'll still talk about it. But here we go. Scroll down. And the other candidates, people just don't know much about them. That's, that's the nature of, of running for office as a first-time candidate in the city of Houston. You, you don't have the money. You don't have the airways. People don't care. And this, this election has been a really dead election. 51% of likely voters hold an unfavorable opinion of Sheila Jackson Lee, 41% very unfavorable. And that's just that's just off the chart. Uh, Sheila Jackson Lee wins um, black voters, 68 to 19. John Whitmire wins white voters, 69 to 18. So there's your number right there. 69 to 18 is a, is the split. Blacks vote for Sheila, whites vote for Whitmer. Both Democrats. He's a he is considered a conservative Democrat. And I know some of you, I ain't no Democrat, man. There's gonna be a Democrat mayor. Just go ahead and get comfortable with that. Always has been. There's gonna be a Democrat mayor. So you get as mad as you want. Because you're gonna decide whether it's going to be Sheila Jackson Lee or John Whitmer. Um Whitmire has been the uh, dean of the Senate for a very long time, and he's the criminal justice guy. Not saying he's perfect. He's going to say a lot of things you don't like. He's a labor guy. Uh, He's going to talk about the gays. He's going to talk about you name it. But he can win. He's the only one that can win. But I know that Democrats got mad at him a few years ago when they were demanding that there be more air conditioning in the state prison system because the inmates had filed a lawsuit that they needed to be cooled off. And he said, if you want air conditioning, don't commit crime. That's the best you're going to get out of a Democrat. Before you get too mad, understand this. I've run for office three times in the city of Houston and won. I ran for mayor and lost. I've been around campaigns since 1989. I understand the demographic. It is a vastly Democrat district. You can run a Republican against Sheila Jackson Lee in her congressional primary. You can do it. But I know the numbers. And when you understand the numbers and you understand these who these people vote for, then you realize you got to get out of there with the best you can possibly get. Whitmire wins independence 62 to 15. But again, independents are less likely to vote. Sheila Jackson Lee wins Democrats 59-29. Whitmire wins Republicans 82 to 1. <gasps> if Republicans show up and win, Whitmire wins without a runoff. I mean, if Republicans show up and vote, Whitmire wins without a runoff. Why are you a Democrat, Michael? Yes, he is. I, I didn't say he wasn't. If you want me to stand up here and pound on Whitmire as well as pounding on uh, Sheila, and be stuck with Sheila Jackson Lee as the mayor, you got the wrong guy. I care too much about it. I've, I've spent too much time down there. I know too much about the power of the mayor. It's a very, 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 very powerful position. You can give up a congressman. They're just going to D.C. They don't have any power. The mayor has all <laughs> the power. Incredible amounts of power. If you don't get Whitmire, you're getting Sheila. It's as simple as that. That's not a hard decision for me. 
And when he wins, you you can feel free because some of you are complete asses and you will for four years. Hey, I thought you said Whitmire was good. Well, he's over there at the, uh, scroll down. And the other candidates, people just don't. All right. Uh, that's what I wanted folks to hear. In effect, uh, he admits uh, he admits <clears throat> Daniel that he's a conservative. In other words, that Cohen and that Cohen, I mean, calling your name, that Whitmire is a conservative. No, Cohen is not a conservative. That Whitmire is a conservative. In other words, what Barry is saying is that we are going to elect in a progressive city. We are going to elect, use the machination of a turncoat Democrat to elect a conservative into office. Take it away, Mr. Cohen. Oh, there's all kinds of terrible context that surround all of this different stuff. I mean, first of all, I mean, just straight up for anybody that's wondering, if you want to put it in a nutshell, Michael Berry threw his weight behind John Whitmire in the mayor's race. So that's that's the first that's I mean, that is that's an endorsement that anybody should run away from like the plague. Um, he might not call it an endorsement, but we all heard the clip. We know what it sounds like. We know what he's saying. He's telling his radio audience to go and vote for John Whitmire is what he's saying. And the reason that he finds him to be acceptable is, as you said, he says he's a conservative Democrat. But then he adds some details around it. He says he's a criminal justice guy. And then he cites the fact that Whitmire uh, refused air conditioning to prisons, which when you call John Whitmire's office, uh, they say that that criticism is unfounded because it was, quote unquote, taken out of context. They run away from that criticism. They attempt to diffuse that criticism. Michael Berry, however, sees it as a compliment of his criminal justice platform. He thinks that people should be cooking to death in 110 and 115 degree cells. And in addition to that, Berry has been one of the ringleaders when it comes to spreading misinformation about the cash bail system. Uh, specifically, he has been pointing at judges in cases where the judge's hands were tied by the Texas legislature on specific cases. And he never mentions the real culprits when it comes to the bail issues, when it comes to felony bail. And I want everybody to know about this because I think it's very important because Republicans never like to talk about this. Mm -hmm. Bail bondsmen. The bail bondsman industry is backed by big insurance, as are many other industries that, Egberto, you, of course, have railed against over and over again, right? All of, all of the, uh, the problems with our healthcare system, the insurance industry supports all of those issues. They support all of the issues when it comes to our criminal justice reforms or criminal justice reform issues in our criminal justice system as well, because it takes you have to raise 10 percent of the money to get out of prison for a felony bail. So what? What bail bondsmen do is they go and they broker a deal and come up with a payment plan and they take a first payment that sometimes is like 1%. And then they turn around and they know all of the tricks of the trade to lobby their way out of ever paying for a bond if somebody doesn't show up one way or another to begin with. Now, personally, and I think there's a lot of evidence to show this. The cash bail system doesn't do anything for anybody. If you're wealthy, if you're part of organized crime and you can raise a million dollar bond, you can get out. If you're poor, you don't get out. It doesn't matter whether or not you did it. It's a matter of whether or not you're rich or poor, period. And so it doesn't keep anybody safe. And there's plenty of studies to show that. The Quattron study uh, shows that. And it came out just earlier this year that it saves better resources related to public safety and that it has no impact on public safety specifically. And then, in fact, it decreases recidivism if, if you have misdemeanor bail reform. It was specific to misdemeanor bail reform. But we're also seeing good results out of Illinois right now, um, which have actually prevented some of the really wealthy mm -hmm. people from who were actually found guilty from paying their way out and at the same time made sure to preserve resources on people that were slapped on the wrist with petty offenses. And it keeps them from getting put back into the system over and over again and bleeding the system dry of our dollars. These dirty bail bondsmen that Michael Berry likes to prop up have absolutely got to go from this system. Whitmire is not going to get rid of them. Michael Berry is on board with that. And that's why Michael Berry supports John Whitmire as the mayor of Houston, because he supports a broken criminal justice system. He is the chief defender of that broken criminal justice system. And Barry is on board with that system. He just wants to rip people apart. He wants to punish people. He wants to be dumb on crime. He wants to be hard on families. And this is the stuff that's not being talked about in this election as much as it should. But Hopefully we do our best. We start talking to people and make sure that it comes up because there's going to be a runoff and there's several weeks here for people to hear about it. So 
When you all go to the polls, you keep this in mind. Michael Berry's thrown his weight behind John Whitmire. And this is the same people. All of the, all of the Alex Mueller cabal is basically now on board with John Whitmire. The Mattress Max of the world, the Richard Weeklies, and now the Michael Berries. That's your media. That's your fundraisers. That's your entire Alex Mueller machine. So the MAGA machine backs John Whitmire in Houston, period, the end. Now, here's the thing, because I want you to restate that. Again and again, uh, Daniel, because he whenever you ask him about it, including I don't know if you remember when I called when uh, again, I sent the email to PBS and they asked him the question that I asked. He tried to disassociate, disassociate, disassociate himself from having anything to do with uh with these guys he, he, he gave the impression like i am just somebody who likes to work with the other side when the other side has no intention of working with democrats they may have intentions of working with him but working with him got the passions and the policies of democrats absolutely nothing so if he's working with them and saying he's successfully working with them that means he is a part of them given that nothing comes back is that right or wrong? Uh, I think it's definitely right. So a couple of key facts that that will give you a bigger picture of all of this. Uh, John Whitmire is the only Senate committee chairman in the Democratic Party in the Texas State Senate because Dan Patrick knew that he could give John Whitmire a state on the committee and he would vote in alignment with him. Either it was ideological reasons or horse trading or whatever it is, it doesn't matter. The point is that they're actually aligned. And that's an issue because Dan Patrick is an extremist who takes Nazi cash and has voted for the most right wing policies of any. Repeat that because right a lot of people don't believe that he actually did take three million dollars. Explain that real quick for for our audience. Well, so anti-Semitic billionaire Tim Dunn, who told the former Republican Texas House Speaker Joe Strauss that he believed only Christians should be in leadership positions, which means no Jews in leadership position, no Muslims in leadership position, and so on and so forth, um, gave money to defend Texas Liberty. Defend Texas Liberty is associated with a consulting firm called uh, consulting firm called Pale Horse Consulting, and Pale Horse Consulting is run by Jonathan Stickland. Now, Stickland hired uh, a mask-off Nazi named Ella Malding. You can look at her telegrams and her Twitter and see all the anti-Semitism that she's spoken about over the years. And they brought Nick Fuentes in, along with Chris Russo from Texans for Strong Borders. And the more that journalists keep pulling at this web, the bigger the network and the thread uh, becomes of different white supremacists who are involved in the Texas Republican Party. Uh, there have been several good um, journalists who have done work on this at the Texas Tribune, Texas Monthly, as well as an independent journalist over at a, a, a blog called Turtle Diaries. Very well documented. Pictures, links, everything. It's, she's got the receipts. She's got citations as all these different groups. Matt Rinaldi, the head of the Texas Republican Party, has been working with some young Republican groups uh, that they've agreed to certify as members of the Texas Republican Party. And there's now actually a civil war that's broken out over lots of these things within the Texas Republican Republican Party. Um, all of the Texas Republican Party has issues that touch this different stuff, uh, but some of them don't really want to be seen as mask off Nazis. And so they've actually written open letters and things like that to some of these people. But Dan Patrick received $3 million and he was pressured for that. And what he did at first was he denounced Nick Fuentes, the white supremacist, mm -hmm. and but said he wouldn't give up the money. Then they asked him about it again, and he said that he was going to buy Israeli war bonds, which means he's war profiteering because that's going to come back. He's exactly. going to make more money off it. Exactly. Right? Like he's he's going to make more cash off that. And uh, today he's attempting to try to misdirect everybody by saying he's buying more of them. But the bottom line is that he hasn't denounced done. He has not denounced this entire network. He just used Fuentes. Stickland got fired. They tried to replace him with Luke Macias. Luke Macias has had on apparently ha allegedly had ongoing text threads with um, Nick Fuentes. And that's out there as well. And he has a long history of racism and white supremacy and all the same talking points. So, yeah, Dan Patrick takes Nazi, Nazi cash. Um, he owns a radio station here in Houston. If you listen to his radio station, they it's regurgitate. Clear. One of the wildest talking points you've ever heard um, about cyber soldiers and, you know, COVID conspiracy theories and, you know, right wing, other right wing theories and all kinds of different stuff. So th this is these folks don't see this race as nonpartisan. Anybody who thinks this race is nonpartisan is naive because it's kind of like when you see something as a fair fight and the other person doesn't. Right. It doesn't. That means it's not a fair fight. Exactly. You can want it. 
You could want it to be a nonpartisan race if you want to, that, oh, everybody's just doing the governance and it's above board. But that's not if one side doesn't see it that way. That's it. There's no more. The problem problem is, is that it makes a lot of Democrats by voting for a Whitmer seem very, very naive. And and it's like you it it is almost like the way Donald Trump got elected. It's because we fell we we fell on uh, on on silliness. The same thing is happening with electing Whitmer. It's like we told you so. John Carter uh, said he's joining us from uh, uh, from London, just joined from London. Whitmer is not only a conservative, he pals around with those who are actively trying to overturn our elections. He cannot be trusted with our progressive city. I agree 100 percent. Michael Berry really shouldn't have an audience. He shouldn't really even be on the air. He shouldn't be treated as mainstream because he's an extremist. He's fringe and he's supporting John Whitmer for mayor. And when extremists support people for public office, that means that that person showed them that they would be willing to compromise and make room for their positions in public office. And that's a problem for anyone who's not an extremist. I want I want to stop you right there because that is a key phrase that you just said there. When an extremist sees something in you that they want to support you, we should all run. It says it says something. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.